Hey guys, this will be a summary for the latest web novel chapter, so it will contain spoilers, so do keep that in mind. This resumes from chapter 88, of which I have a summary on my channel. The chapter starts with an outline of all of the obstacles the cast has overcome, such as the demon beasts being conquered by Meili. Reed Astria, who was possessing Roy Alphard, was defeated by Julius, and Lai Batinkatos was defeated by Ram. And finally, Amelia conquered the Tower Trials. Everyone achieved this by cooperating, and as Amelia would put it, everyone was getting along, which is a throwback to the last chapter. Julius dives into Shola, dealing damage. Shola tries to retaliate with Hell Snipe, but she cannot pierce Julius's rainbow light defense. Shola does, however, knock him away physically and Beatrice is there to back up Julius with magic if he needs help. Subaru looks around and notices that the demon beasts aren't really coming closer anymore, they're just watching, and he assumes that's because Amelia has done something with the trial, although he's unsure. As Subaru was thinking, Shola jumped near him and tried to kill him, however with the aid of Beatrice, Subaru and Beatrice were thrown onto the sand. As Shola is about to kill Beatrice and Subaru, Julius again steps in and saves them both. Subaru thinks of three main ways to win. The first is Julius winning. The second is that Subaru and Beatrice need to come up with a spell to win. And the third way is that Amelia will somehow jump down from the tower and solve the situation with her beauty. With all joking aside, Subaru starts to think about victory and how he can solve the situation without relying on people like Amelia, because he needs to solve this situation on his own. So he starts thinking about all of the cards he has in his hand to see if he can find a way to win. The scene switches to Shawla's perspective and she states that she's a sniper. A sniper is someone that waits, and they wait for their prey to come to them, and so that's what she would do. She would wait for prey to come, and then she would kill them. She thinks about the past 400 years of which she was waiting inside the tower. She was sad, but at the same time she was happy because she made a lot of memories with her master, and after all, her master has come back now. Shula then goes on to state that all she wants is love and all she wants is for her master to love her. The scene switches back to Subaru as he notices that Shula's shell is going even brighter red, noticing that the red colour is symbolic of love and passion, almost as if Shula's feelings are being projected outwards. As Shula was distracted fighting Julius, Subaru attacked her from behind with his whip getting the whip caught up in her tail. Beatrice then used her Vita spell to make Subaru heavier. Despite that though, Shola still should be able to lift up Subaru, because after all, she's extremely strong. However, she can't. It turns out there's a bunch of witch beasts helping Subaru hold the whip, and it turns out Meili is back in action. It turns out that Subaru's trump card for Corleonis, and the person that took most of Meili's burden, was Gian, the Earth Dragon that was with them, or Joseph if you're an English speaker because they changed his name for some reason. Now that Subaru had pinned Shola, Julius cut off her tail in pincers and she couldn't do anything. Meili then walked up to Shola and used her divine protection to sort of give her back her sanity. The scene switches to Shola who's breaking away bit by bit and she remembers a conversation she had with Subaru. They talk about the promise that Subaru couldn't remember and Subaru states that Shola's master is not a good person. In this memory again, Shola professes her love to Subaru, however, Subaru declines. Subaru looks at Shola's body, which is breaking into black dust, and realizes that Shola is dying. After all, her goal is complete. Subaru questions whether or not they should have came to the tower. After all, if they didn't come, Shula didn't have to die. However, Julius corrects him, saying that's an insult to think about. Subaru grabs Shula's head, keep in mind she's still in scorpion form, and starts crying as she dies. And Shula, instead of attacking, just catches the tears which are streaming down Subaru's cheeks. Subaru then notices that Shola is fully gone and all that's left is black sand as he continues to cry. However, something happens. Out of the black sand, a small red scorpion appears 
and this red scorpion walks up to Subaru's hand and starts snuggling with it. The scene swaps to Shawla's perspective where she states that now it's time for her master to wait for her. Subaru then picks up the scorpion which is around the size of your palm and he states that the scorpion has this bright crimson colour which symbolises the love that Shawla has had for over 400 years and that colour will never fade. So yeah, it seems Arc 6 is coming to the conclusion now and Shawla is a baby scorpion, so we'll see how it goes anyway.